wake up hello everybody in vc and youtube land it's matt and the talk of the last week or so and definitely the talk of this weekend is mccartney 3 and i've already made one video on it thought i'd make another one to check in with my initial early impressions on the album so yesterday made a video talking about how thrilled i was to be able to land a copy of the green vinyl which out of all the 48 58 probably more still to come versions is so far my favorite this looks really sharp haven't opened this yet i'm still debating whether i will or not but i also got the target green dye cd which i have opened and been playing as of yet i have not listened to any reviews on youtube i know quite a few people have already posted videos with their thoughts on the album I'm going to listen to those today and looking forward to it but I just wanted to sort of I did listen to the two legs had a they went live last night with uh, just people talking about the album so there was some you know you got some feel of how some of the people felt about the album but other than that there's there's a lot of reviews I'm looking forward to hearing those I thought I would weigh in with my early take and you know you can uh, get yourself in trouble here doing this because a lot of times uh, with an album or anything else I suppose a movie or whatever you might really like it just on first blush or you might really not like it and then you know six months a year five years later you look back and think eh, it wasn't really as good as I initially thought it to be or, or it's a lot better than I initially thought it to be so this is not going to be a really in-depth review. I'll save that for somewhere down the road a year or so from now. I still haven't done, even though I've reviewed all the McCartney albums, I still haven't done a, a full-fledged review of Egypt Station. And so I did, I think I did give kind of an initial impression video on that too uh, a couple of years ago when that came out. But, um, so yeah, I mean, I feel almost embarrassed to, to, to even talk about this because my initial impression and i was not uh, i said in the video i made yesterday that anything we get from mccartney at this point is 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 gravy is frosting on the cake because it's 78 it's it's silly to expect him to still be making something on par with the uh, you know rubber soul with ram with back to the egg or something turns out just my initial thoughts this could change again like i said I might have misspoke, might have spoke too early because I was way better than I expected. I love this album and I'm going to gush over it. And like I said, six months, a year from now, I may look back on this video and think, man, what, what are you thinking? You should have, should have waited a couple of months or something and, and got more familiar with the album before you went there and just ran it and raved in the positive about it. But, um, I listened to this a couple of times yesterday, but I was here at home and I was paying attention, but it was also kind of, you know, had the computer on, had the TV on, the dog was on, the doing stuff around the house. So, I mean, I was listening, but I was sort of just, you know, not, not, uh, not devoting my entire attention to it. Some of the stuff I heard, I really liked the first couple of times there and some of the stuff I really couldn't make up my mind just yet so anyway today I had to go to work for a couple hours and it's about an hour hour-ish drive to work each way so I took the CD where I could uh, play it and just you know give it my full attention listen to it about four and a half times going to work a couple of times uh, going to and from work so I've heard it now about seven seven times roughly so uh wanted that chance to really just uh, concentrate solely on it and delve into it and get a feel for it so um i do love that cover too i mean i think that's going to be some people have said that it's just an okay cover some people like it i think that's going to become one of the iconic mccartney covers um, of course i love the green dye the regular one has a white one and then there's all the other color variants with blue and red and so forth. But I think the green looks the coolest. 
and as I've already said, I love that back photo. I know that's a different photo from the regular album, which has him in profile. And I noticed on uh, Facebook, Adam Nichols and some other people posted there. The, they got the red version, the blue version, etc., etc. So the different versions all, I guess, have different back pictures because the red version has a separate picture from this. And Anyway, so there's all those separate pictures. And I know that there's the gatefold is different on this one from the regular one and probably some of the other versions are as different too. Anyway, enough about that. I already kind of talked about the album yesterday. I went to work and unfortunately my pink and my white and my four CDs with the different demo on each one did not come in yesterday, much to my chagrin. I hate when that happens. I wish when you pre-ordered stuff, they ought to make sure that they send it out a few days earlier so you get it on release date. But they'll show up Monday or Tuesday and I'll live. So looking forward to that. And at some point, I'm going to need to get a regular black vinyl edition of this so I can play it on vinyl. Because I'm not sure if I'm going to open the pink, white, and green. And anyway, on with the song. So this opens with Long-Tailed Bird and... I, um, like I said, I, I didn't really know what to expect from this. I, I did hope that it would be good just because I love McCartney and I love McCartney too so much. They're among, up there with my favorites of his solo catalog. So I didn't want McCartney 3 to be a dud and sort of, you know, you got the two good ones in the series and then the dud one. Didn't, didn't want him to Godfather 3 it, in other words, where... You know, people say there's McCartney 1 and McCartney 2, and you say, well, isn't there McCartney 3? And you go, mm, there is, but we don't really talk about that one. Fortunately, that didn't happen. Long-tailed winter bird starts it off. Absolutely love this. It just, it's, uh, uh, I think he's playing, I don't know if he's playing acoustic or electric. Sounds acoustic, but it's, uh, it, it just drives. I was actually, like I said, went to work and put this in when I was driving to work. It's a great driving song, kind of a dangerous driving song because I looked down and I was going like 85 miles an hour on the freeway. Uh, it chugs along. It's great. Someone um, on the uh, Two Legs podcast, I think, yesterday said, not sure if that's the what he should have chosen as the opener to the album. I disagree. I think it's a perfect opener to the album. Uh, they said uh, that it's kind of like if he would have uh, opened McCartney 2 with Check My Machine. Which, um, and I, I get where people may not like that or this, but I would have had no problem if he would have opened McCartney 2 with Check My Machine. I love that song, especially the long version. But, uh, yeah, I think this is great. It's just it's, uh, got a little bit of a feel of something that might have been on the Led Zeppelin 3 album. It's got a little bit of Fairport convention-ish, convention sound to it, or vibe at least. Um, just a... Just a great opener and a wonderful, upbeat, fun, just brilliant song. And for now, I'm going to give Long-Tailed Winter Bird a 10. And again, you know, like I said, uh, already said several times, that might change a year from now or whatever. But for now, it gets a 10. Okay, so now we go to the second song, Find My Way, which at first, I was not thrilled with this song the very opening part because it sounded like an Egypt Station song I like Egypt Station the fine parts of it I really like some of it's just okay but it sounded like one of the not good Egypt Station songs one of the boring songs like um, hand in hand or do it now the and I thought eh, great I don't want to hear I don't need another one of these but then it slides tempo and sort of changes over and it picks up and it's uh, goes really good it's uh, uh just picks up and it's uh i don't know if he's singing about you know old age if he's singing about being a rock star at 68 and all the um, um how do you do that i don't know if he's singing about covid I'm not sure but the song chugs along i love it it builds up and it has a great um just musically great and especially the ending and all so find my way kind of has a little bit of a clunker of a start but it picks up really quick um with a nice little i guess that's a guitar there 
and then it goes back into the Egypt station kind of mode for a second and then it picks up and it doesn't look back from there. Find My Way for now gets an eight. Um, and this album is uh, basically 11 songs and it's all ace with the exception of two songs. You got one dog and you've got one sort of rando filler song. So we go to song number three, Pretty Boys. And uh, almost every album has to have a dog. And here it is, unfortunately, just completely stops the momentum of uh, two great opening tracks. This is uh, McCartney 3's Waterfalls. This is McCartney 3's Crena Crory, even though don't tell anybody, but I actually don't mind Crena Crory. I kind of like that. Um, waterfalls I can't stand. But uh, this is the dud. This is the dog. It's... Um, Blah. And like I said, I've heard this song now seven, eight times. I don't know if he's talking about politicians or models or consumer corporate culture or what he's talking about here. Um, and I finally decided that I don't really care because this song sucks. Maybe it'll grow on me. I seriously doubt it. But you never know. But for now, this song blows. I would give um, Pretty Boys two actually no i'm gonna give it a one because it sticks out like a sore thumb on an otherwise great album and kind of mars the album and uh so i'm gonna give it a one and uh no he keeps talking about uh you can't touch the pretty boys no problem there i don't want to touch them so uh like to touch up on jenna coleman but so pretty boys that's that's the album's low point that's the dog but we go to the next song, Women and Wives, and uh, it's a little bit better than Pretty Boys. It's not a whole lot better than Pretty Boys, but it's uh, a little bit of an improvement. Not very great song, though. This is just the sort of random, pointless, it's their song on the album. Um, he, he sings in a deep voice, kind of trying to do Fats Domino or Lead Belly or Howlin' Wolf, I guess. I don't know what he's up to there. Uh, he's in pretty good voice throughout this album. Better voice than he was in Egypt Station. And I really didn't mind his singing in Egypt Station overall because I, I understand he's, you know, 70s. He's not going to sound like he was back in uh, 20s and 30s. That's, you know, just how it is. But uh, better vocals on this album overall, but... Um, there's nothing wrong with his vocal here. It's just kind of, I'm not sure what he's up to with the deep voice singing here. Um, the, the thing about Women and Wives is not a god-awful song, but there's just nothing to it, and it's certainly not good. And there's he's got this annoying tendency over the last 15 or 20 years on his albums of always having a song or two like this that's just sort of... You know, it's not awful, but it's just, it just doesn't really have any reason to be, to exist, to be there. Uh, like the aforementioned Hand in Hand or Do It Now on Egypt Station that were just sort of blah songs. So, uh, Women and Wives, there's a, a couple of times in the song where it, it sounds like things might get interesting, but they really never do. It's, um, it, it's just, you know, it's boring. And... If, if I ever wanted to listen to boring music, and so far in my life I never have, I don't want to get it from Paul McCartney. If I want to listen to boring music, I'll go buy an album by the Eagles or Tom Petty or U2 or go listen to Rumors or something. Uh, so I, I don't need boring music from Paul McCartney. Um, and and the, the sad thing about this is you know there's going to be Egypt Station, the casino edition for 300 bucks, and plenty more variations and special editions and unreleased tracks coming out of this just like there were with uh, Egypt Station and no doubt we're gonna get some of those unreleased tracks that we're gonna say man that's ten times better than pretty boys or women and wives why the hell didn't he put those on the album and leave women and wives for an obscure b-side or alternate you know bonus track or better yet just throw it on the floor and forget about it so at this point in the album, though, I will say I was a little fearful because I was thinking, well, you had two great opening tracks, and then you got the 
hit these speed bumps of pretty boys and women and wives that aren't very good and I hope that, that doesn't mean the rest of the album's gonna be stuff like this and that it's just gonna be okay an album with two songs that are worthwhile on it fortunately the next song Lavatory Lil is uh, turns things around that son of a bitch froze again damn computer um, anyway Lavatory Lil great stuff and uh, for a minute there I was confused I thought did I you know, I know I'm getting getting older, but hopefully I'm not that old yet. Did I take the Paul McCartney album off and put on White Blood Cells by the White Stripes? Because it just screams White Stripes. Uh, I, he's, I know Third Man Records released a version of this, and so I guess he's friends with Jack White and all. But um, good stuff. And it also is kind of, the title's neat because it harkens back, tip of the hat to the Beatles, uh, you know, Polythene Pam and... Mean Mr. Mustard, uh, Semolino Pilchard, and stuff like that. So there's that sort of connection. Could be a little faster tempo, but it actually works fine as it as it as it is. It's just a great great rocker. Uh, supposedly, it's about he um, Heather, the ex-wife, peg leg, kickstand. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, you'd have to ask Paul about that. It seems kind of strange that he would write an, uh, uh, a hate letter song to her now 15 20 years after the fact but maybe it is maybe he just holds a grudge and i guess um you know especially since he's uh, seems to be happily married to nancy and doing well and all but maybe he holds a grudge and probably he you know still has to interact with her some because of we beatrice their daughter who actually would be what probably like 14 or so now but uh, so he probably still has to deal with his ex-wife some and maybe that's where that's coming from maybe it's nothing to do with his ex-wife who knows but for now uh, Lavatory Lil gets a 10 from me next we go to Deep Deep Feeling this is a monster this is a one this is just a, I mean the album just gets better from this point out and uh, Deep Deep Feelings, just a slowful, so, so, slow, it's hard to say, soulful, slow burn. Um, it's sort of like a I Want You, She's So Show Heavy vibe, except it's not as boring. I never was really a big fan of I Want You, She's So Heavy. I like it all right when I'm in the mood for it, which is very rare. But it's kind of that feeling. It's from the heart song. It's kind of a deep soul. Uh, it's got a soul vibe. It's got a little bit of a hints and ghosts of Led Zeppelin 1, a uh, little Pink Floydish stuff going on there, here and there. Not so much blatantly, but just sort of uh, in spirit, I think. It's just a, uh, goes on for like eight minutes. Some people have said it's too long. I think it's just perfect. I think it's, um, uh, I could have gone twice as, twice as long, to be honest with you. It's uh, just this total immersive experience and and just a, a a ride that's worth taking. Love the false endings. I love that it goes on forever and that he's just reeling it out and jamming. Uh, just a great, great soulful song, and that's going to get a 10 from me. And I will add, I was hoping that damn computer would unfreeze. Um, I will add that uh, it's just a perfect morning for listening to this because this is always, I think, going to feel like a Christmas album. To me, just the way that um, you know, the mini, uh, the wide album, and um, Rubber Soul feel like Christmas albums. Uh, even John Lennon Plastic Ono Band, mainly because it came out around Christmas time. All those albums in this too, but it's just got a really wintry Christmas holiday season vibe so far to me and when I was driving to work today it's, it's kind of chilly it's nice it's gonna rain a little later but it's cloudy it was foggy it was just perfect uh, cool uh, pleasant weather it was cold the last few days today it was like 50 or so in the morning so just really nice weather and uh, driving in the car and I was driving and drove in through the back roads out in the country so Really great uh, added to the listening experience, but deep, uh, deep, deep feeling gets a 10. It's just uh, incredible, 
wonderful song and I love this so long and, and I'm like I said I, I love the long version of Check My Machine I love the long version of a lot of the James Brown songs like Papa Don't Take No Mess where you can go with the commercially released 45 or you can go with the 10 minute version I'm the one who thinks that it's all too much should have been stretched to 20 minutes long and stuck on the backside of Yellow Submarine album Deep Six to George Martin stuff and just have like that side long uh, you know album uh, backside just one song on it uh, it's one of my favorite George songs anyway it's probably my second favorite George song of all time uh, then you could have put um, the White Album version of Not Guilty on the other side and made Yellow Submarine a George heavy album. But anyway, I like the long songs. I like the long, long jams. And I can understand where a lot of people don't really get into that. So it's just kind of to where you like that or not. I like it. So I give Deep Deep Feeling a 10 right now. Then we go into this really heavy rock and roll song called Sliding. Again, you kind of got a feel of a white stripes or a black keys song only better and i like the, both those bands all right but this is just heavy paul mccartney uh probably the heaviest he's been since nothing too much just out of sight the opening track of electric arguments uh love the guitar stuff in here i uh, kind of take the song lyrically as paul giving the finger to old age just early impression sliding just a wonderful monster of rocker it gets a 10 too now we go to the eighth song, The Kiss of Venus. Uh, you know, acoustic song, Paul sitting back, you know, singing a ballad outside on the porch kind of feel. Got a sort of a white album, Mother Nature's Son feel to it. Or kind of like some of those songs, the Hey Diddle Diddle and stuff. The songs like that that he made around the time of Red Rose Speedway and uh, Wildlife in between that sort of period. Um love i think it's a harpsichord love that part there we go piece of shit um love the uh just the bu bucolic nature ballads that paul can write in his sleep and this is a very good one it, sometimes when he does that it's just okay kiss of venus is a good one it gets an eight from me right now now we go to seize the day and i thought from the title like uh oh it's one of those cheesy paul sort of anthem songs Kind of like when you're encountering another Peace and Love Ringo song. But, no, it's great. And um, I was listening to it, and it was reminding me. I was thinking, who does this remind me of? And I still can't really figure it out. But it's kind of beatly, a little bit bad finger vibe to it. But it's it's kind of like the zombies. Kind of Odyssey and Oracle um, feel to it at, at certain points in the song. Not throughout the whole song. But uh, just a great, great, another great song. It gets a 10. Uh, but there is a line in there about dinosaurs and Santa will be staying in tonight, which uh, it, lately, last few albums, Paul's been pretty good about not doing the cringeworthy lyrics. And uh, I just thought of that when I saw that. But actually, I think that's kind of a cool little lyric. So the lyrics in here, some of the songs don't make a whole lot of substance or sense lyrically. But there's there's nothing really um the eskimo toes and yankee toes or whatever it's in that same song but neither of those are too bad so there's nothing really too embarrassing or embarrassing at all lyrically but seize the day really good uh late 60 ish early 70 ish sounding pop rock song great one i'm gonna give that a 10 too i mean it's getting embarrassing giving the tens away but now we go to number 10 um Maybe my favorite. I don't know. I, I haven't really decided what my favorite. The first uh, Long-Tailed Winter Bird may be my favorite, but deep down, number 10, also one of my favorite. It's just an epic soul groove. It feels like, sounds like a, a great Lost Prince song or a great Lost Stevie Wonder song from talking Stevie Wonder back in the 70s when he was good, not Stevie Wonder from the 80s on when he was lame. Just really, lyrically, it's repetitive but a lot of soul music is so that's fine it, it works fine it's just a monumental just builds and grooves and and sways and rides it's just sort of a epic thing like isaac hayes's version of walk on by or something 
and uh, love this. It's a long one. I wish it would have been longer. I'm going to give uh, 10 to Deep Down. Had it confused there with Deep Deep Feeling for a second, but both of them get a 10 because they're both great. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what do we got left? We got one more song left here. Um, album ends with one of those double song ballads that Paul so loves to do. Winter Bird and When Winter Comes. And I know Tom Hanyadi, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was saying he wasn't too crazy about this one. Could be mistaken. I think he said that on the Two Legs podcast last night. Again, love you, Tom, but disagree here. I, I really love this one. This one has the feel of um, another one of those Paul in the country on the farm nature songs uh, a little more upbeat it kind of reminds me of some of the stuff on Ram reminds me of Little Lamb Dragonfly Little Lamb Dragonfly is a better song than this but then again that's the best song on Red Rose Speedway in my opinion but this is great I'm, I'm going to give this one a 10 too I just love the uh, imagery and it's almost like a, a storybook you know a Be Beatrix Potter book or just a storybook set to music I kind of see a little story and images in my head really love the guitar playing and the singing and I think it's a, a, a good fitting into the album so that one gets a 10 so there's a lot of 10s um, on this album and like I said there's only two songs I don't like and everything else is, is in that I don't think I gave anything below an 8 uh, and everything else was a 9 or a 10 I don't know if I gave any nines. I think I gave a couple of eights and tens. But um, so criticism, and this is one that, of course, he has no control over. It's just it's, it is kind of sad that he doesn't have the voice that he had 20 or 30 years ago. It would have been great to have heard these songs in uh, peak McCartney vocals. But life is what life is, and so he's 78. You can't expect him to sound like he did back in you know. 1975 or whatever anymore but I think his vocals are good on this overall it's just it's kind of sad that it would have been how great it would have been to hear him sing these back in the day the other criticism is I was hoping for a little bit more of the McCartney 2 vibe with the weird crazy experimental out there stuff the temporary secretary check my machine Mr. H. Adam type songs there's not there's some he does different things on here that he hadn't done before, so I mean there is that, but there's not not a whole lot of really wild out there stuff. But I will give him credit because I mean he does change, he does do different things. Someone like Neil Young, who's I love, whose album Colorado came out, I think it was last year, it might have been earlier this year. Love the album, but Neil, you know, at this point does same thing he's been doing for the past 30, 40 years. He just does the Neil thing. So you got to give McCartney credit for doing different things. Even something like For You on um, Egypt Station and the other sort of auto-tune song that he did, which I didn't like at all and thought was horrible. And the song that he did with um, uh, one of the rap guys, uh, don't remember which one, thought was terrible. But, I mean, even there I give him credit for at least trying to do new things and different things and taking some chances, even if they don't always pay off. Here, fortunately, he takes some chances, and in my opinion, they always pay off. So, uh, the other criticism, something that I am uh, pretty tired of, and uh, don't know what I did with it. Oh, yeah, the, this was old the first time he said it, and I'm tired of hearing that, and I know he's going to be saying that on every single TV appearance that he makes so we can do without that part uh, those are small criticisms though because I mean you can't do anything about the fact that he's old and older and his voice isn't what it was um, he does take some chances and some experimentation wish there would have been a little more out there stuff like the McCartney and the farm like McCartney 2 and the fireman stuff but I'm fine because I mean everything works on this album and it just feels like a great Christmas album and winter album and it, this is um like i said I, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say i'm gushing over this album this is this is the funnest most coolest mccartney album that i've uh, i've played it like i said eight times now i'm not tired of it i'm ready to play it some more i know i'm going to be playing it all this week going to work and this is the 
the most excited I've been about McCartney album and the best, I think, since um, Tug of War, maybe even McCartney 2 and Back to the Egg. Um, I think this is, I love new. I like a lot of, uh, even love a few parts of Egypt Station, love parts of Memory Almost Full and Electric Arguments, but I think this is better than all of those. I think this is far better than Flaming Pie or Chaos, which are, I know a lot of people highly rate those albums. Eh, I'm kind of lukewarm on them. Uh, but this this is up there. This is a worthy uh, companion to McCartney 1 and McCartney 2. It, okay, maybe it's not Ram, maybe it's not Back to the Egg, but it's pretty close in that category. I'd say, uh, people are going to laugh, I'd say as good, maybe even better than Band on the Run. Uh, so far, I'm really loving this. And this just happily, thoroughly knocked my socks off surprised. I may regret all this video in six months and when I've heard it some more and kind of come down to earth, but uh, this is way better than we have any right to expect from someone at this late stage in his life. Uh, good on you, McCartney. Merry Christmas and thanks for this.